create a workers' comp return to work program. Every business owner knows that a workplace accident usually means two things. First, the employee is going to be out of work while they recover with the help of your workers' comp insurance. Second, your insurance rate is probably going to go up if this incident affects your ex mod. Hey, I'm Sari from Kickstand Insurance, and in this video, I'm going to show you how creating a return to work program can benefit your employees, benefit your business, and lower your insurance costs. So, what is a return to work program? You might be more familiar with the term light duty return to work program or early stay at work return to work program. Essentially, these are plans that allow employees to return to work as soon as they are physically able, instead of waiting until they are physically capable of returning to their original jobs. According to the Department of Labor, many injured or ill workers could remain in their jobs or at the workforce if they received timely, effective help. Early stay at work or return to work strategies and programs succeed by returning injured workers to productivity as soon as medically possible during the recovery process. In a nutshell, these programs succeed by returning workers to work as soon as they are medically cleared and capable of being productive. So let's break down the benefits of a return to work program. It has benefits both for the employee and the employer. Let's start with the benefits for the employer. Employers benefit from return to work programs in a, quite a few ways, which include the following. Fewer days off from work, reduced short-term and long-term disability costs, increased employee productivity, reduced overtime for employees who are filling in for the injured employee, reduced recruiting, hiring, onboarding for temporary employees that are filling in for this injured employee, and finally, reduced workers' comp claim costs. As you can see, even one of these benefits is reason alone to create such a program, let alone all of them. Now let's talk about the benefits that a return to work program provides for the injured employees. These include the following. When they return to work earlier, they have the ability to retain more of their original wages than what they're getting paid by workers' comp. The ability to maintain their skills because they're actively doing something. The ability to contribute to an organization. This has a lot of mental benefits because it's emotionally satisfying when they feel that they're contributing to a bigger goal, which leads to the next benefit, improved healing and recovery time. It gives them a chance to remain connected with their coworkers and have a social life. And lastly, it gives them a renewed sense of purpose. As you can see, a return to work program has many benefits. However, it does require specific steps to create a successful strategy. Before you can create a return to work program that helps both you and your employees, it's important to sit down and create one that fits your organization's needs. We'll break this process down into multiple steps to help you assess if you would like to create this program and how to go about it. Step one, you have to decide what is included in the program. You, the business owner, have a lot of flexibility when it comes to deciding what to include in your program. This includes what levels of duties you will allow employees the option to perform. The broad categories of duties are as follows. Light duty work, limited duty work, and modified duty work. While they all have similarities, they do differ. Let's break them down into greater detail. Let's start with light duty work. Light duty work is the easiest level work. It's basically only administrative tasks. There's not going to be anything hands-on or require manual labor in this level. Now let's take limited duty work. Limited duty work bumps the manual level up a bit. Employees may be allowed to perform some of their usual tasks, but be limited either in scope or the amount of hours that they work for. For instance, an employee may be able to work but unable to stand all day. In that case, they can take half a shift. And lastly, we have modified duty work. Modified duty work is a combination of regular tasks an employee would do, along with other duties that are easier for them to perform. It can be a combination of the above two levels of duty. For instance, an employee who is unable to stand all day can do half a shift of their regular duty work and then finish the shift with lighter work, such as administrative tasks. There is no one size fits all solution over here. Every company has to sit down 
and figure out what works for them and their business. Step number two is to create your policy. Businesses should have written programs that explain all your policies. This applies from everything from your safety program to your return to work program. A written policy gives your employees, managers, and others a clear expectation of how the program works, what is expected from employees, and what the organization is prepared to do to help them return to work. It may also highlight the potential negatives of not returning to work early. These include slower healing, loss of skill, and more. Of course, it should also spell out what levels of duty are available, what would be included in each of them, and how long a worker can do them for. Step three, dig deep into job descriptions. Because employees may be placed in other job roles, you need to have very tight job descriptions in place. You have to make sure they're accurate. Do they accurately describe the level of manual effort and skill involved in each job. Also, what are the physical requirements of that job? Make sure your job descriptions are as detailed and accurate as possible to ensure a good fit for a return to work employee. Periodically, these job descriptions may also need to be updated. Remember, you cannot simply drop an employee into an open job position and expect them to flourish. It has to be a good fit in terms of skill and the job. Step four, Create a range of light duties. Rather than placing a returning worker in an existing permanent position, it may be better to create a range of light duties that they can do as they recover. These tasks should not be particularly strenuous, but should be more than just busy work. Remember, your employee's sense of value and connection to the company relies on them feeling useful and important. One option is to speak to managers in your company. What tasks do they routinely push off because they don't have time? What kinds of tasks would they like to outsource to other people so they can focus on things more related to their jobs? Examples of this can include things like administrative work, safety inspections, supply ordering and stocking, training, professional development, and more. Step five, create a road to recovery. When an employee begins to transition back to work, they should have a defined road to recovery. This should be a form provided to them that clearly defines what you expect of them which position they'll be in, and when you anticipate the job ending. It should also include their work schedule, supervising name, date by when they have to accept it, and a place for the employee to sign and date the form. You may also want to include a name and contact information for anyone they can contact with any questions about this temporary job position. Step six, put someone in charge. Now it's time to name a coordinator for this program. This should be someone who has deep knowledge of your return to work program your company, and other related areas. They will also act as the primary contact for all employees who are candidates for this program, and they will also potentially have access to sensitive medical information. So make sure to choose wisely. The final step is to inform your employees about the program, its benefits, and how it works. They won't know if you don't tell them. This can be done in many different ways, including at your next safety meeting, at an in-person training, during your onboarding process, and more. An optional step is to decide who can be included in the program. Some businesses make it exclusive to workers who are returning to work after an injury that was covered by workers' comp insurance. However, you don't need to limit it to just those category of people. Allowing other people into the program can have many benefits, including people with disabilities or who have gotten injured in other ways. Now that you have your return to work program, all nicely done and complete. Remember, it's also important to have a good workers' comp policy. Having an active policy that covers your workers is essential, and in most states, it's a requirement. It can sometimes be challenging to find a policy that meets your needs and budget. Many insurance carriers don't offer workers' comp, and others may not be willing to insure your business because of the really strict underwriting guidelines. However, Without a policy or with a lapse in coverage, you can face serious fines, fallout, and even lawsuits from injured employees. At Kickstand Insurance, we work with a wide range of clients to make sure we get them the right coverage they need. It takes less than 10 minutes to fill out our brief online form and start the instant quote process. One of our expert insurance agents will then reach out to you to determine exactly what your needs are and make sure you get the perfect policy for your business. And sometimes they can even save you money along the way. Ultimately, 
A solid workers' comp policy and a good return to work program can work in tandem to help you grow your business. Download our quick cheat sheet available in the description below for a quick summary on how to create your return to work program. Good luck. Remember to like and subscribe for more business and insurance tips.